Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Paul Garrigan, uh, Wicklow GDA, and just to welcome everyone tonight to the latest edition of the Wicklow Coaching and Games webinar series. Um, tonight, we're going to focus on helping coaches to understand and how to deliver age appropriate activities for the 14 uh, to 15 year old player. Uh, tonight, we'll also have a number of activities, including the presentation, and I'd encourage all the coaches to use the chat option on your device if you'd like to participate in these activities. Garrett Doyle, Wicklow GDA, will be delivering the session, um, and I hope you enjoy the presentation and take something from it that you can bring back um, into your sessions going forward. Okay, Garrett, we'll pass it over to you. All right. Thanks, Paul. How's everybody? Thanks, everyone, for logging on. Just there on that previous screen, just in case uh, people didn't see it, just so you know, this uh, webinar has been recorded and will be shared. So if there's any issues there, probably best to log off there now. Um, so, yeah, uh, Garrett Doyle here. I'm a Games Development Administrator, Wicklow GAA, and uh, I'll be taking the lead with Paul, Darren and Cormac there in the background. So to, to date, there hasn't been any major problems with Wi-Fi, but if I cut out, one of the lads will take over. Um, we expect it to be about 40 minutes with a bit of uh, participation at times. We'll ask you to enter stuff into the chat box. We'll give you a minute or two to do it. Um, and then there'll be time at the end to ask any questions either in the chat box or open up the mic. Um, so the title of the webinar is the Taurus uh, uh, program, Player Pathway program. So tagline there, supporting a coach's journey. So Taurus is the Irish word for journey, and essentially this maps out uh, what challenges a coach will face as they go up the ages, coaching the various ages of uh, teams from go games to youths to adult. Um, <clears throat> so the main aim tonight is to help you understand how to deliver age appropriate activities for the 14 to 15 year old player. You move on, please, Paul. Yeah, thanks. So there's three main outcomes. So as we see there, demonstrate the tourist coaching principles and practice. So you can sum that up, but basically that's the how to coach. And then the, the second objective is explain the total playing performance coaching model. So summing that up would probably be what you coach. And then um, briefly at the end, we'll highlight the... Um, the player pathway coaching resource. So what's available to you to help you do both those things. So there's 23 areas, what you're coaching, how you're coaching it. And it, this is all set up to, uh, to target who you're coaching. So in this scenario, the players of under 14, under 15. So we're just going to start with a task. So just where we, we give you 60 seconds or so to just enter any of your thoughts in the uh, chat box. So essentially, the way we want you to view this question is players are moving from the child area into the youth. So what are the opportunities and challenges for you as a coach now working with, the, with these youth players? So there's going to be new opportunities, new challenges. Some of them will be the same. So if you can just enter anything there in the chat box, please. Okay, thanks, Liam. How to keep a lesser skilled child engaged and committed. Very good. Engaging. Whitney, thank you. Challenges catering for all skill levels. Very good. Balancing playing time for various skill levels. Excellent. I'll give you another few seconds there if anyone wants to enter anything else. Okay, very good. So, might go to keeping players involved. Excellent. Excellent. Working with more mature players, other sports, outside influences. Develop leaders, working with more mature players, players taking it serious. 
Yeah, okay, thanks for all that. That's excellent. So we just want to move on there, Paul. Yeah, so here's a few possible answers we'd put in here. So there might be a new or an increased, improved desire to learn. Uh, skill is going to come into it and players are becoming more skillful. Um, so ambition, they might, uh, you might be able to challenge them more in activities because they're more skillful. Physically developing. So this could be a challenge. There might be gaps beginning to show or increase between players. And it might, but also it's an opportunity there to introduce SNC to capitalize on this, these, uh, this, this development. So this is really when we start introducing competitions, which can be a positive. So we, you can focus on stuff to train towards. And uh, there's possibly an, an improvement, better understanding of game sense. So this allows you to maybe introduce tactics and team play strategies. Some of the challenges. So you're going to have the 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 obvious and always the one, particularly for the, the the younger players, the child and youth players, balancing the participation needs versus the competitive needs or the competition needs. Um, we have the psychological development, physical development, and the biological development. So size versus uh, maturity levels dealing with the growth spurts that are going to occur at this time. As mentioned there in the chat box, involvement with a number of teams and not just other sports, but also other GAA teams. So the school team, the, um, the possibly the county team, a couple of club teams if they're playing above their age or below their age. Uh, peer pressure might come into it. So friends outside of the sport might be uh, influencing them to maybe not be as committed or to miss the odd session or maybe not play at all. Um, and then motivation levels. So <clears throat> it's a challenge for those maybe who haven't got the ambition or no longer, it's their parents dropping them there for something to do. Now they have kind of more of a say. So there's a few opportunities and challenges that uh, we're going to face at this level, at this age group. Okay, so the tourist uh, program features the player pathway. So it's a stage appro approach that maps the player's journey. And like I said before, it's a guide for coaches of how to deliver what is needed, when it is needed. And it aims to provide a clear understanding of where a player currently is, where they are heading. So the players move up the ages, the, what their needs are kind of change as they move up and this resource, this program aims to support coaches in uh, assisting players on that pathway. So task two, slightly different. So this is folks, and like I said before, this is on the what you can coach. So what can you coach or, or what can you as a coach develop in your players? So when you're devising your sessions or your, your monthly planner or whatever it is, what will you be putting down on that planner? What will you be hoping to do? And when you're reviewing it, um, what are you hoping to have achieved or improved in your, in your player? So if, again, another 60 seconds, 90 seconds there, can we enter some thoughts in the chat box? Okay, decision-making, excellent. Skill improvement, better understanding of team structure. Greater teamwork. Skill, fitness levels, improvement. Excellent, technical, tactile decision-making. Focus on tactics. Tactical awareness, excellent. So we're all on the right path here anyway, so if you want to move on there, Paul. Yes, yeah, so here's some possible answer, answers. So skills, develop team play, decision-making, discipline, defending, attacking, movement, speed, fitness, good communication, and a lot more, plus what's in the chat box there, all relevant, all applicable here to the what to coach. So this, as referred to in, I think it was outcome two there at the start, this can all fit or does fit under what's, 
known as the total playing performance model or the, the TPP. Can you move up? Yeah, so there it is. So it's or easily referred to or remembered as the three T's and three P's. So some of the terms were actually used there. So technical proficiency, tactical prowess, team play, three P's, physical fitness, participant feedback and psychological focus. So everything we kind of mentioned there would fit in neatly under um, one of these headings. And these headings are what makes up the uh, the TPP, which is the main bulk of the resource, the coaching manual that we'll show later. So just to give briefly definition of each of these, maybe uh, break it down a bit. So technical proficiency is essentially the skills of the game. And what we're aiming to do is coach them that players can perform them accurately, consistently at, at match tempo. So examples of some of the skills there are hook kick, near hand tackle, a feint or a sidestep. That's different now to tactical awareness or tactical prowess. So that is you have the skills, but now can you make the right decision? So you're faced with a problem, a dilemma. Can the players choose which skill to use? And these skills are ones when you're on the ball or off the ball. So should you pass or should you shoot? Should I tackle in this situation or should I just shadow? Should I hand pass to my teammate or is a kick pass required? Those two then kind of make up or slightly different to what, what, what we understand as team play. So kind of self-explanatory there, playing as part of a team. What are examples of that? So some are simple things like calling for the ball, others require more effort or desire to support runs for the youth player here we might be introducing playing some players might be playing a specific tactical role or the group or the team might be asked to play a, spe a specific tactic so they might have to focus on certain areas and neglect other areas even though they might be better at these other areas that might not fit into the tactic Others, examples of team player are assisting teammates in the tackle. So then the first P is physical fitness, which was mentioned. So the definition there, ability to perform the basic techniques, engage in physical contest and respond to signs, sound, signals, experience during the game. Okay, and involves expenditure of energy. So it's going to be running challenges or demands on your running better jumpers, increased or improved flexibility, strength is going to become a big uh, a big tool here as well as power. So these are things that can be developed that will improve the player, improve the team. Uh, participant feedback. So essentially this is uh, the level and type of communication with the coach, positive and clear guidance that they're exposed to questions from the coach in training or at matches that promotes them to think about what they're doing and why they're doing it and what the coach or what what, uh, what the coach wants them to do and why they might be doing it and again it's it's a skill it can be improved and the earlier it's kind of started the the the, the more you can do with it and it's not such a shock when this becomes maybe when they're an adult and all of a sudden feedback is introduced and they've never they've never been they've never had a dialogue with their coach before so it's simple here is someone has you pose them a problem or identify highlight a situation so when your teammates has the ball uh you're in a bit of trouble how can you help this ball carrier so get some thinking you might even get a more specific they have their back to goal and they're surrounded by two players their heads down how can you help them guide them so you try to guide the player to think of the what why you're thinking that uh, they could help their help their teammate and then psychological focus is more the way i <clears throat> come at this is paying attention you won't know for definite but it's kind of paying paying attention to the player's state of mind and trying to improve their focusing on the here and now ignoring distractions, trying to ensure that your activities keep them engaged and that 
every session, every match, every kind of interaction that they feel valued as part of the team or the group. They feel included. They're challenged. They're given opportunities. So it's kind of the environment you as the coach set and how you, I feel the coach has the biggest impact on this because they set the environment. They choose the activities to train and they set the tone with their body language, with their voice and with their interactions, with their feedback. So if I'd say all our objectives with our players is to help them improve and help them to learn. And the best environment for that is a positive, uh, happy, inclusive environment. Um, so that's what we're trying to get at here. So this is where it sits. So the focus there is that wheel in the middle with the two yellow uh, uh, circle and square at the bottom there. So basically the three T's are around the technical skills, left-hand corner, tactical prowess in the right and team play down the bottom. Physical fitness is the left of the quadrant. It sits on participant feedback and the main thing that touches on all of it is the psychological focus, the player's state of mind. And within each of these areas is examples of what you can be doing to develop these this, this area. Um, so that's what the resource is made up of. It's uh, essentially it's recommendations. There'll be players, this, some of that content will be too easy for or not applicable. Uh, others it might be too advanced for and that's probably the challenge but as a whole that's pro sticking to that will be a good uh, a good starting point okay so now we move on that's kind of like the what and that's what that's going to help you that resource um will help you choose what activities you're going to do and building on what we said there in the psychological focus we're going to talk now about the how and this program known as the Taurus player pathway features five principles so principle being a rule or a belief governing one's behavior so this this is all focused on the coach does the coach adopt or apply the Taurus principles and what we're pushing here is that if they do they'll increase the chances of a player reaching their full potential so the tourist principles are, it's an acronym that your sessions and your sessions, individual sessions and session programs aim to be testing of all the players, unique to the players, relevant to the game, are all inclusive and then are stimulating. So essentially we try to pick activities or adapt activities that challenge all our players. This can be formal testing, actually like doing shooting tests or whatever and measuring it or informal. You just alter the activity. You think it's too easy for them. So you add a challenge to it or you, you ask them to go faster, further, be more accurate. You're just you're always kind of uh, balancing. Is this too easy or too hard for this particular group, for this, these couple of players? Does it need to be brought back a bit for these two and brought forward a bit for these other two or stuff like that? So it's, it's always you're trying to get it at the appropriate level that they're, they're being tested. The unique comes in that each player has individual needs, so strengths and weaknesses, and activities should be uh, aimed to, to develop these needs, and then also, or more importantly, the feedback. So what player one might need feedback on, player two might need feedback on something else. Uh, so... That's big focus, big challenge, obviously, considering the amount of players in the GA squad, but they, that's what they will be looking for, individual feedback. The relevant part is we're trying to choose and adapt activities or scenarios that resemble what they're going to face in the game. So that's either, it could be obvious in some of the activities, but some of it might need to be teased out or sold, let's say, to the players of where we'll actually use this or why we're doing this, because this is where we're going to face it in a match. The all-inclusive is it's essentially giving opportunities for the players to, to practice, to impress, to train, to try stuff. So we try as, as often as we can to keep all the players involved all of the time. That doesn't mean to be every second they always have to have a ball and be doing something. They could be on for a little bit, 
get a little rest and then straight back in, as opposed to big lines, you have to wait a minute or two to get your turn. And then the stimulating part, so it's enjoyable, developmentally appropriate, and a holistic GA experience. So we try and coach the player, coach the person, keep them engaged, keep them challenged, and uh, essentially that uh, it's enjoyable that they that they feel it's worthwhile. So just wait there, Paul, before we get started here. So um. So we're just going to show three videos here now, and um, they're the range from about 45 seconds to 90 seconds in length. What we're going to do, there's no real task here. We'd just like you to look at the, each activity and see if you can identify um, where the tourist principles might be in operation or how this is this coach Ad, uh, adopt, has has he adopted the tourist principles? So um, we're going to go from a warm up activity to a kind of a goalkeeper restart activity to a a one v one activity. Uh, it's two different coaches: Keen O'Neill, formerly Kildare manager, and Colum Nally, uh, coach there. I think he's from Loud and coaches in Mead. Could be wrong there. Um. So, yeah, so just look at this video. The first one is basically it's a warm up activity that um, on the website is kind of straight lines, linear movement. It could be perceived as a bit monotonous and boring, and Keen O'Neill has kind of uh, changed it or altered it slightly. Yeah, and. and Coaches, if you can't see the video there, Darren has uh, inserted a YouTube um, link into the chat box. So if you're having trouble um, seeing the video, you can just click your, your link in the, in the chat box. So I'm just going to start it now. We're not feeding the ball. No, no, just the exercise. Drive up in the air. Drive up in the air. Transfer that to football. High feed for the man coming on. One, two, and up. High feed. That's it. Higher again. Higher, not long. That's the one. Spread it out. Make it bigger. Make it bigger. Spread it out. Good job. Good job. And we're jogging on again. When you receive, change direction. When you receive, change direction. Go somewhere else. Good. Good. That's excellent. Well done. Use the space. That's well done. Right hand. Left hand. So floor into the hand. That's it. Change the trajectory of the drop, boys. Change the trajectory. Spread out, spread out. And let's pick up the pace for 10. That's good. Pick up the pace on your movement. Well done. Well done. That's it. Attack the ball. Come out of it. Attack it. Come out of it at speed. Excellent. Excellent. Low feet on the floor. Tote the ball if we need it. When you pick up, sprint for three, change direction. Passing and moving. Passing and moving. Let's do it. Attack the ball. Attack it. Good, good, good. That's good. I really want you to work on your kicking. That's a great ball. Well done, well done. Nice. A to B, pop to C. A to B, pop to C. That's it, we're constantly moving. A to B, tumble, pop to C. Let's go. Get the timing of the support right. Get ready for it. Catching high above the air, exploding into it. Okay, so we just kind of have uh, identified one or two uh, examples under each heading there. So keep in mind, that's an edited version there. It's longer on the website and it's probably longer in reality than what they've even put on the website. So he's challenging the players to move and perform at pace. Also, um, with quality uh, through his instructions. So essentially, he's setting a tone there. He doesn't go through the motions. And it, it's, I'd say it's clear that the players get that, that message. Uh, 
One element there we saw unique is particularly near the end. He praised his good skill at execution. So that kick pass at the end that he was referring to. So when he observed good play or good skill execution, he praised it. It's relevant. So he's, he refers to and tries to bring it up to match tempo. And he adds in little movements like the tumble there that might be uh, a part of, uh, of the game. All inclusive. So multiple ball contacts. I think it was a player, a ball between two. A lot of movement, a lot of passing, a uh, lot of transferring of the ball. And then the stimulating part. So it gets through there a variety of activities, different setups. And essentially the stimulating part, as I see it, is, is his tone. He sets a positive, energetic tone. Um, and uh, he's essentially, he, he's letting the players know that like every part of this training is important and um get ready because we're going to be moving on to something. Uh, we're going to be keeping this intensity and moving it on here fairly soon into the session. Yeah, Gary, I, I think it's a really good example of how, how he's applied the tourist principle to, like I'm sure a lot of our coaches are familiar with the, with the GA 15 warm up, and, you know, it can be very linear and, um, you know, the activities, there's nothing wrong with the activities. The activities are, are all really good, but I, I think Keen O'Neill's adaption here and, and using them tourist principles on that, you know, and any coach can 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 adapt that to, to their needs as regards the tourist principles. But I think I think the adaption of the activities there is 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 really important for coaches and, and, and really focus on the how there as well, you know. Yeah. So I think we move on to the next one. So that's that's the angle we're taking with these videos. There's two more. So maybe instead of trying to identify all five here in this one, maybe pick one or two now and see if you can see any example of it um, in, in this activity. Um, so this is Colm Nally. Nally. It's a keeper restart game. Essentially, there's two keepers on the outside and there's a number of players in the middle. And... A lot of the time he's talking where he's going, he's there, he's there, he's talking, he's letting them know where the keeper is. Not, he's not telling the keeper where the uh, player on the inside is. He's just letting the inside players know where the keeper is because the keepers move from where you see the keeper there, they move around the outside so they can, the ball can come, in, can come in from anywhere. Right, listen. The good looking Aaron. He's with the oranges. The other orange is with the, the kicking from the blues. He's with the colours. Right, so. Yeah, now, lads, you can go anywhere, but you're not allowed to kick two balls from there. Do you get me? So as soon as you kick that, you gotta get there and be ready for the next one. So that means as soon as that ball is won, one of you is presented. Now what I'm looking for is a decent kick. Right? A decent kick. So you're gonna be faced. You can look at all these boys shooting at different angles. Okay? But we're going for that, Aaron. You. Good, good. One, go! Let's go! Ah, two, go! Good, good! That, that's it, good, good! Right, he's there, he's there! Next turn, next turn! Ah, good! Brilliant! From there! Good! Where is he? He's there, he's there, he's there! Good shot! Brilliant! From there, from there! Ah, lovely! Where are you? Where is he? He's there! He's there! They're good. Now look at him. He's running. He's tired. Perfect. Now show for him. Show for him. Right, where's your last red? There it is there. And over here, you've two left. That's one, two. Now good. This is exactly what we want. Match pressure. Match pressure. So very good. So we'll just go through it again here, the next slide. So you can see there, it's a challenging task physically for the outfield players and mentally also for the keepers to try and find a free man in the crowd. Um, so the unique element of this, so developing the positional game sense of, say, the defenders looking for a ball and the attackers trying to intercept a kick out. Um, the question they're being asked is, how do I provide an option for my goalkeeper? Again, it's unique then also to the goalkeepers because they're going to have this scenario a number of times in the match. 
relevant to the game. So kickouts are a big part of it, uh, either to put pressure on the opponents or win your own. So you've got the challenge of keeping possession or gaining or winning possession. It's all inclusive. So managed to get a drill there, a number of players involved. Um, and one kick is followed very quickly by another one, by another one, by another one. So a number of opportunities. And then the stimulating part, so quick restarts. So it's clear there, you must be switched on. Um, even if you've lost the first one, you have to stay switched on, try to get the second one or third one. If you down tools, it's going to be seen. Keeper's going to have a free player there to find each time. And again, similar to Keane O'Neill, Colin Nally there, he's setting his tone, he's getting them switched on, he's come, he's kind of letting the players know this is planned, this is organised, this is appropriate, this serves a purpose, this is where we're going to be doing it. Um, we're not going to be hanging around here. You've got, you're going to get chances to practice, chances to impress, time on the ball. So uh, again, you can see there in evidence just, and I'm sure you've probably found more examples. That's just five we've highlighted there. And then the third video is 1v1. Again, it's Colin Nally. Now this is a wider, further away camera angle. Unfortunately, a pillar down the middle of it. Um, basically it's 1v1 and um, one player has the ball, one player doesn't have the ball. And they have a set time to keep possession of the ball within this large area. And then on the whistle, depending on what challenge Colum Nally has set them, we can't hear exactly. It's either go forward and score a point or a goal or break out to a line. So again, very relevant to the game. So I'm going to press play there, please, Paul. If you Okay, so quite a challenging activity. So just keep in mind, these are just videos, um, particularly for Colin Nally on his YouTube channel. So if anyone hasn't come across that, I'd, I'd recommend it. Um, that, that video goes on for another couple of minutes and he kind of highlights at the end that it's an overload uh, activity to kind of like really challenge them physically. So, um, but as we see here, like, so where's the tourist principle of testing in this activity? So, or how can you alter it? So he could have matched people up there based on ability or mis mismatched them. So he might have put a player of a certain ability against someone superior ability just to really challenge them. So there's an option there. And also, he's challenged them to, like, score a goal or a point or a line break. So it's not just keeping possession or turning the ball over it's keeping the ball keeping possession turning it over and then doing something with it result at the end um so the unique element to this as regards individualized feedback for the player 
So an activity like this gives you an opportunity. So say defender one, he could get feedback based on his effort. He could be really working hard or he might need to work harder. So that's a coach can come in there and it'd be specific to him. Defender two, it might be displaying excellent technique or poor technique, might be making a fundamental error when they go to tackle. Similarly, there's an opportunity for individualized feedback for the attacker. So one might be using their steps brilliantly, eating up the ground. Others might be, or another attacker might be just playing the ball every step or every second step. And again, a, a, a different attack, attacker again could be displaying great technique or poor technique. Um, in an activity like this, that I'd recommend, that's where, the, depending on how many coaches are part of your team, really moving around, not being in a group, uh, being focused, spread out around the pitch and identifying players that you're going to give feedback to. And then you, you kind of break it up that as many players as possible, get some feedback. Uh, relevant to the game. So we have here, so like where would you use a 1v1 in a game? where on the pitch or where within tactics and honestly it's fundamental to all a 1v1 is seriously important at any time in a game any area of the pitch whether it's the corner back or the corner forward in possession of the ball and then all tactics either excel or fall down based on 1v1 so even the blanket defense they're broken down usually by exploiting a 1v1 or someone losing a 1v1 that's where they fall down and um, all inclusive so that's kind of, everyone's engaged everyone is challenged they're all active and that all inclusive is also very important because from the from the point of motivating the player they they're, they're they view it as opportunities to impress you so that you you and then by giving them opportunities to impress you, it gives you opportunities to actually coach. So the more you get to see each player, the more uh, the more times, the more information you have on them, and then it'll probably lead to better feedback from yourself, as opposed to just making only getting to see it once and then having to make a decision. Do I say anything? And if I do, it could be incorrect because I've only seen them seen them do this once. And then the stimulating part. So again, numerous opportunities to impress. And the fact that an activity like this, it's kind of, it's it's not set in stone um, when it starts and when it ends. So dispossession results in role changes. So you have to keep focused. You have to alter your, the player has to adapt to whether they're in possession or they've lost possession or uh, what the whistle signifies them to do. So all this through the through the three kind of videos there, and particularly the tourist principle, like the big part here um, with the psychological focus is, and it, it links to the principles is you're trying to challenge each of the players and then support them, challenge and support, challenge and support. That's the, probably the key thing in coaching. So here's here's again, this is the the TPP. So we've talked, or the sorry, the player path pathway resource. This makes up the, the coaching uh, manual. So the TPP is in the middle, the wheel and the two yellow uh, areas. And then there's just tips on the outside, the four corners there, the coach, the player, the environment and the game. So they kind of lean more towards on how you coach. And in the middle is the what to coach. So here is the Wicklow GA resource. So we have... Uh, devised sessions for each age group based around the theme. This one here you see is tackling five activities on each session. I think it's six sessions, Paul, for each age group, is it? Yeah, there's six sessions for, for under 14s and six sessions for the for the under 15s. Yeah. Um, so there's another uh, resource that's available based on the tourist principles. And then also the Leinster GAA website so um the leinster ga also have the youth tourist resource uh similar to the wicklow one where with the number of sessions and then the final part of this program so we've talked about so one part is the webinar the workshops which we're doing at the moment 
The second part is the, the resource which we've highlighted there and what makes up the resource. And then the third, the third part is the one we can't do at the moment, but hopefully we'll be doing soon enough. Any coach that attends a workshop or a webinar can avail it to club support visits from one of the GDAs. So the way that works, the coach contacts us. Um, we talk about what area we want to try to develop or work on. We devise a session together and then um, uh, we come out and we deliver it together. So when I say we, myself and the coach in question, the coach is looking for the visit. So that'll be uh, visit one and then second visit takes a kind of similar lead, but we might uh, might take more of an observation and feedback session as regards, was there any change, improvement, um, any further questions? So it's basically just to, to help a coach who wants to adopt the uh, TORS principles and, uh, and apply them in their sessions and the GDA um, assists them in doing that and gives them feedback on if they're doing it. So at this stage, we're going to open it up to any questions. Um, will we just type your name in the chat box, Paul, is it? Yeah, if you want to just chat, uh, um, put any of your questions into the chat box there that you'd have on, from myself or Garrett on, on any part of the presentation there. Um, we'll take any questions that you have uh, in relation to the presentation or in relation to any issues or, or any questions that you would have with, with coaching the 14 to 15 year old player. Um, just in addition to what, what Gareth said there in resources, there's also um, a new Leinster um, Taurus Youth Coach Resource uh, manual actually developed by Colin Nally. So there's about 10 or 12 activities in there for, for sessions and there's also a goalkeeping um, activity um, session included as well. So that's a, a really, really good um good um resource to have. And and I'll send out the email, I'll send out the, the PDF of that um tomorrow to all coaches in addition to the stuff that Garrett spoke about already on the on the on the webinar tonight. Okay, so we've two there. So how long really like so there is, you can go too long. So you're probably, uh, you're, you're talking around around the hour mark just before, or just after, but essentially it's, it's to develop the theme of something you've, you've, you want to work on. So all sessions are going to involve some kind of warm up. You probably want to get some technical work in, which could be combined with the warm up. And then particularly at this age group, you're probably introducing, you want to introduce an element of tactical awareness or team play. Um, you will have it mapped out probably in your session how long you in plan or hope to spend on it, but you might shorten each activity or lengthen it depending on the success of it. So if you don't think it's working or it's too difficult, you might park it and move on to something else. Or if you think it's working really well, you might keep it going. But um, I'd say, but for this age, I, over an hour and fifteen minutes would be too long. I imagine so. Probably just coming in just over the hour. How many times per week is really going to be specific to each each team, each player, based on how many teams they're playing in, their the activity levels of their school, um, if they're playing under GA school team, so. Uh, That's that's all I can answer. That that'll be specific to them. I know if if if, if they were only on this one team and doing nothing else, it'd probably be two times a week with a match. But that might not 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 always be possible. So that's again Whitney there. How long training should be? So that would be my take on that. Paul, do you want to come in on the how long there or how often? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I I'd agree with you on that, Garrett. Like I, I definitely wouldn't be going over the hour fifteen mark. I'd probably try and get get the sessions done done within an hour and again you know if a player is not if just playing one sport yeah two two sessions and a session at the weekend but like that doesn't apply to to many players so that kind of has to be adapted like the one thing you don't want a player at that age is out 
five and six times a week because you know that's it's not going to end up well for the player. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with yours there. Like in between sixty sixty minutes, just just over, and and if possible, you know, uh, you know, two to three sessions a week if they're not doing a huge huge amount of other sports. So then with the big drop off, Eamon, um, there is kind of a natural drop off in the youth at all sports. Now, I'm sure maybe possibly at some sports or in some clubs within sports, it's above the average. Um, but really, it's kind of you, it's not really to be viewed in isolation. This is the big push. Well, there's kind of two areas to keep in mind. One is the big focus, and that's the re- big reason of goal games is to try really get maximize the numbers in your area and expose as many uh, children to Gaelic football as often as possible and give them as many minutes as possible and get them a, like a real positive relationship with it with the expectation that there's going to be a drop off but then obviously within within areas the population varies so it, if you're starting at a low, a low enough number, with with a kind of a natural drop off, that's what might hurt you. The other thing is a big. Well, my kind of approach is this is why, and this is kind of why we do the webinar and this push the TPP. It's really that what they're being challenged to do in their activities in go games. It needs to be moved on. It needs to be. It needs to set a challenge for them. It needs to be new to them. It needs to be uh, varied. Um, and it needs to kind of like, uh, they be able to link it to go, okay, this is different to just learning the skills that we were doing two or three years ago. Now we're learning the tactics and now we're implementing the tactics. So if they buy into that and are engaged in that, and that's that's an element of the training, I think that's a big uh, advantage for clubs and coaches keeping their players because I know uh, other sports will be introducing that element of, of, of training to their to their um, to their sessions and that's what will excite and appeal to teenagers yeah I, I, yeah no I, I agree did I, did I saw what you said there Gareth like the big words that jumping out was me challenging like you need to keep keep the, the players challenged in it and obviously engaging them engaging them in the sessions you know building confidence is another one and you know even me going back years ago when I was coaching that like did I spend a lot of time building confidence in players I don't know if I could answer yes and that but th- I think that's a real important one like because you know if you build confidence in players and stuff like that they, they, they'll stay they'll stay with the game like they're not going to drop drop out of the game so if you build confidence challenging them challenging them and engage them in, in the sessions I think I think you know you have a much better chance of keeping them in the game because, you know, and I agree with Ned, it's a, it's a big drop off at this age. And, you know, you're after bringing that child or the club is after bringing that child from four up to 15 or, you know, 14 or 15 and then possibly lose them then like where, when they're halfway through the journey. So I think it's 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 very important to, to really engage them, build confidence and challenge them at, 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 at the level they're at, you know. Yeah, thanks, Paul. So there, Liam, just as regards to the essence, See, so that's what we're trying to get across there. It'd be every session, and that's that's what makes up the um the Gaelic fifteen. And the big push of the Gaelic fifteen is to to reduce injuries. Um, but part of that is developing strength. So, uh, they're all kind of the fundamentals of any kind of future strength training. Specific strength training are the the. Uh, the movement patterns within that Gaelic 15 and we were on a webinar about it actually during the week as part of Leinster GAA and uh, I haven't got the exact details but if you were to do say 50 sessions a week and that always involved or sorry 50 sessions in the year and that always involved the Gaelic 15 that's like a huge amount of time based on the fundamental movement patterns of strength and conditioning and also not only time but a huge number of reps of doing squats and lunges and uh, glute bridges. Um, as regards the conditioning, I'd refer to particularly the second and third video we did. They were full on uh, 
full like short sharp but full intense um well the first the the kick out one was kind of short and sharp and a lot of sprint and the second one was kind of more endurance so those type of activities will be building conditioning so that's also an element that goes into our uh, yeah goes into why those coaches use activities like that because it's it's developing multiple parts of the player the skill the the so uh, the tactical awareness of the players as well as the physical of the players as they go older or as they progress yeah there'll be individual sessions but i think the idea or the, the hope is that they will be doing them they'll get an understanding and an education of how to develop strength and they'll be taking more ownership of it and doing it at home so it's it's individual sessions as part of a group aren't as essential yeah you anything, Paul? yeah yeah and uh, like the, the video that we would have shown you of keen o'neill like that was we clipped out three minutes i think that video goes on for 12 minutes and there's loads of of conditioning and, and strength exercise he incorporates in through that okay so i uh, after the presentation i'll put up the the full video of that and also Liam, there's a resistance um body resistance exercise uh, resource developed by leinster as well i'll put that up on the on the chat or on the email there tomorrow as well so their exercise you can do with that age group and um, you know in 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 part of your session okay so sean guaranteed match time for all players yeah that's and and particularly as they get move up get older Outside pressures of how far you're going to go in the League of Championship, that's that's that which we referred to earlier. The challenge between participation and competition. So this really comes down to like properly uh, and wholeheartedly adopting these principles that you're trying to develop each of the players. And that's if that it's only a question each coach can ask themselves. What do I stand for? And what really, when I look back on this year, am I going to be look back on like fondly that I gave each player uh, enough opportunities and time in the pitch or I set everything up to go as far as we can in the championship and whatever way I didn't matter because we got to the final or we won it or whatever so yeah the players are only going to develop if they get opportunities in training and opportunities to to, to play in the in the um in the matches Yeah, just to come in on that one as well, Garrett, like I, I think as coaches, uh, definitely over the years, my philosophy has changed in relation to like, you know, if players, if you have 20, 21, 22 players for the year, I think as coaches, we, we owe it to them players to, to, to play. Like they come up to play games, they come up to play matches, regardless of, you know, winning championships at juvenile level, like ultimately, you know, senior level is, is, is you know, the, the end of the player pathway as regards winning, in my opinion. But like, you know, and everyone likes to win. But I think, we, you know, if somebody is training consistently every week, we owe it to them as coaches to play, you know, and they're not going to develop or, you know, or they're not going to stay in the system if they're not playing. If you have a child that's coming to training every week and he's not getting a game, you know, or getting half a game or 20 minutes every three games, he's going to stop playing. So I think uh, as a coach, you know, especially at youth level, it's all about developing players and every player matters because whether he's going to play a senior, play, senior for the club, intermediate, junior, B, junior, C, He's he's going to play for the club and he's going to be a, a member within the club, so it's important to keep him keep him involved. So Rob, as regards to stretching, so again that Gaelic fifteen, the movement patterns, uh, that whole video basically is what's essential and required for warming up uh, players and preparing players for the physical activity that's to come in the match of the training, and that's. Essentially, it's an element of kind of dynamic stretching where you just kind of replicate the movement that they're going to do. And then in the warm down, there's nothing there on the website or in the resources, but it's that's where maybe the longer stretch, 10 seconds holding a, the, the muscle in place. So the grind, the hamstring, the calf, where they've done their activity, um, they're, they've, they're cooling down, they're going to be going home where you just you, you stretch out the muscle just to... Uh, prepared for their future session so i think that 
that covers that, Paul, does it? Yeah, I totally agree with you. About 15 minutes for me with the warm-ups any of the teams and probably about five minutes, you know, with, with, with a warm-down um, after training. Uh, Neil, there, physical size difference and ability in players in this age group hard to plan the session. I would agree completely, and that's why I would argue that the planning is going to be most important for this, that physical differences are going to really exaggerate as regards abil- uh, uh, as well as ability. So the more you do in the planning, you'll know your players individually, who matches up well, who doesn't, what size they are, and within any activities you kind of want to do or choose to do, that's then when you've got to come in and then how does this activity that I've seen here or picked here or devised myself, how does this suit my players and how can I adapt it or adapt the groupings or take charge of the groupings within within my team, within my session to 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 uh, so it works effectively. And so that's, that's going to come down to the planning. So that's right. The more you plan, the better you plan for each session. I think the better the, the sessions are going to be and the the best chance you have of addressing that that um, that problem that all coaches within the youth uh, system have, the physical and the, the, the ability differences. Do you have anything there, Paul? Yeah, no, no, I agree with that one. Uh, you know, and it's, it just, as Gareth says, just comes down to the... The, the, the session and the way you plan it out and I suppose how you pair up your groups and stuff like that so it's a little bit of group management in relation to the even in, its, in addition sorry to the planning the session so you know that's why you probably you, well you definitely need coaches and help with you in relation to planning them and then managing the sessions when they're when they're taking place yeah great stuff and then um uh, yeah is it fair to say Game-based drills are very important. Should there be an element where they practice the skills in isolation? Definitely. So yeah, they need to they need to understand particularly the key teaching points of the skill. So they have to kind of some competence of the skills. So um, that can also there's an opportunity within uh, the warm up to do a bit of that. Um, if you were to practice in isolation in your sessions, all the skills every session. You probably you wouldn't have enough time, so you're going to have to maybe just highlight one or two each session initially before you get into the game based stuff. But this is where, particularly with the GCA, I try to push on the players. Um, they can't do tactics. They can't develop tactics on their own. They can't develop decision making on their own. They can't really get any participant participant feedback on their own when they're um when they're uh, when they're at home on their own. What they can do on their own is practice the skills in isolation and do some physical work on their own. So the way I try to sell that is if we want to spend time on these things that we kind of can only do together, team play and tactics and and getting feedback from the coach, I, I will be able to do more of that if you do the skill and the physical stuff at home and keep working on that taking responsibility of that. But yeah, I would I would I would try I would always kind of come in after the warm up with I'd highlight a maybe a skill that's going to be used a lot in that session and I might just give them time on their own in isolation under no pressure to just get their eye in as I call it. Anything there Paul? Yeah, no, and you mentioned the warm up there, and uh, Emily, if you if you want to google Mick Bowen warm up or du- the du- he's over the Dublin ladies at the moment, he does a lot of uh, two ball exercises in his warm up complex skills there where they're actually focusing on the technical element of the game as well so um and in addition to that obviously like doing the doing the skills in isolation it w- would be key as well as regards practicing on their own um you know players w- working with as i said the two two balls as well so um you know it's important that the technical is as important as any other element in the game and as gareth says you can team a session you could we say we're focusing on tackling tonight and we say the tackling is not working or it breaks down in a 5v5 or a 6v6 you can take them out work on near hand tackling or frontal tackle and then go back into the game so you're kind of working on the on the skill in isolation with them and then you're going back into a game based situation but ultimately if they're on the technical skills they're not going to be able to do it so um it's as much important as any other element of the of the TPP model
Okay, I don't see any more there, Paul. If anyone does have any more, she can send it on to us. If um, if we've logged off before we see it, we'll get an answer there to you tomorrow. Um, we'll be sharing this presentation, won't we, Paul, tomorrow, as well as links to the resources. Yeah, I'll send. Um, I'll I'll email out everything to um to every participant that was on tonight. Um, I'll send them the PDF of of the session as well, and then all the resources as well. And um, just just before we go, just to thank Garrett there for um a great presentation tonight. Um, we're back on Friday night. Uh, with Darren and Cormac at eight o'clock, they'll be looking at the sixteen to seventy year seventeen year old player. So. Um, if if you'd like to join us, we, we'd be delighted. Or if there's anyone in your club um, that that would like to take part in it, um, just sign up through the link, which will be advertised on social media, Facebook and and Twitter. So, um, just thanks again for everyone for for contributing tonight. Um, hopefully, you got something from the session. And uh, please God, when we get back out into the pitch, and um, we we can we can use it going forward. Thanks a lot. Good night, everybody. See you. Bye bye. Thanks, Car. Thanks, Paul. Good luck. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Gar.